Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Katie Jans of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Verona, New York, and this is a sermon that was preached at a graveside service for Gladys Zimmerman on Saturday, June 20th of 2020 at the St. Peter's Cemetery. And this was a very brief service because it was very hot out, and uh, afterwards I know Gladys's family all um, gathered for a celebration of life and to share their own stories. Um, but part of why I'm doing this for Gladys and for Gladys's service and for others is just because of the way that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the way that we gather for funerals and memorial services and graveside services. And with the realization that not everyone can always be there for gatherings that they would like to be there for. And so I give you this reading and this sermon for Gladys, for Gladys Zimmerman. The scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This was to, of course, to Gladys's family. And I said, I know that after you leave this place today, the, the cemetery, you will have a chance to gather at Wanda and Mike's house to celebrate uh, Gladys's life and talk and share memories of the amazing person that she was. And I said, I am so glad to know that you'll have that opportunity in a more relaxed setting in a family setting instead of in the hot sun, hot and humid sun. First though, I wanna thank all of you for asking me to be here with you on this holy day for you as a family. Because even though I didn't know Gladys during her life, I was honored to meet with some of you, and I actually met with them several months before the service to hear more about her and to get to know her a little bit in a different way. So I got to hear great stories. I got to hear about how much Gladys loved playing Pinochle. They actually had a little deck of Pinochle cards that went in, that were interred with her. That's how much she loved it. And that she saved everything because you never knew when you might need it someday. Um, I got to hear how she collected coins and Beanie Babies and, and how she gave collectible stamps to all the kids and the grandkids for gifts. I got to hear about how she cared for all of her family by saving up coupons and sending them and, and how she would always uh, you know, clip out medical advice from the paper or from magazines for, for different people. I got to hear about how she met her husband singing in the choir at the Oneida Methodist Church and how she loved surprising people with the things that she had done. The fact that she was an athlete and a cheerleader and a musician in high school and had a varsity letter. Not what you would think if you see a, a quote unquote little old lady, right? The fact that she had a college education in injection molding and she'd worked actually in a plastics factory. And then of course I got to hear how important it was to her that she stay in touch with all of her family 
and she had a large, large family. But it was very important to her that she connected with each one that she visited, that she um, could connect on FaceTime. She was fine with technology and using that to connect with her family. And she always wanted to find out what everyone was doing. And really, she had this gift for connecting with people and making new friends right down to the pharmacist at Walgreens. So that was a special gift of hers. I know that there was a lot more to Gladys than just those things, but I got to know her just a little bit. And I'm so glad that the fam that Gladys's family shared her with me. When she went to be with Jesus, it was a great loss, not only for her family, but for the world as well. And I said this to her family, it sounds like she was the glue that really held you all together. Now, such a loss is hard to weather, but I would guess that she would find great joy in knowing that you are all here together to support each other. When some of us sat down back in early March to plan for this day, uh, there were several scripture readings that seemed appropriate, including the spot where Gladys left a bookmark in her own Bible. I mean, that, that doesn't happen every day, <laughs> but I believe well, one, of her, one of her grandchildren, I think, uh, had planned to read that reading later on in the day. And so for this service, we ended up choosing this passage from John 14. This is a chapter where Jesus is talking to the disciples about his coming death and how he will care for them in eternal life. And it's a classic passage, partly because it gives us a picture of heaven, right? We don't really get a lot of specifics, but we do hear what matters most. We hear that Jesus himself will go and get this place ready for us and will bring us there. We don't have to worry about having nowhere to go or getting lost on the way. We don't have to worry about whether our bank account or our good deeds will be enough. We don't have to know the password or the secret of life here on earth in order to find this eternal life. Jesus promises to be the way, the truth, and the life. He died and rose again to be that for us, to, to take away death's power to separate us. And our trust in him is all that is required. This reading also reminds us that there is plenty of room for everyone in God's house. There's actually an African-American spiritual based on this passage, and it has the words, plenty good room, plenty good room, plenty good room in my father's kingdom. And the good news for all of us is that there is plenty good room in the Lord's kingdom, not just for Gladys, but for us all. And this, <laughs> I wanted to really lift that up to Gladys's family because I think there were a hundred people there in the cemetery. I mean, it's a big family, <laughs> but there's plenty of good room for everybody, for every one of them. And at the same time, there is plenty good room. There is also a closeness, right? Jesus is getting those rooms ready for each one of us. And somehow, miraculously, all of those rooms will be right around the corner from Gladys's room. It's like we'll be neighbors. We'll be neighbors together in the Lord's house. I know that Gladys had a deep faith in Jesus as her savior, a deep trust that he would bring her through all things. And indeed, he has done just that. Sometimes the fullest and truest cure for our illness is not to patch up our bodies for a little bit longer, but instead to pass through this life and know that healing and peace are in the next. Our earthly homes, our bodies are wonderful. They do great things, but by their very nature, they are temporary. We take comfort in knowing that God has built a new home for us with him, a home that will last forever. 
And we know today that Gladys is safe with the Lord in that home, that she is safe from pain and suffering, and that she is waiting in God's house for that day when we will join her at last. Thanks be to God. Amen.